Hey guys, welcome back to the Mod Bros. In this video, we are lucky enough to have Mr. Nathan's C to S for us to review. Uh, neither Tucker and I have any interest in getting the C to S since I already have a C to and also he is waiting for the Havoc Prime to come out. So we originally were not going to be able to do a review of the out the C to S with the Alpha Kit pre-installed, but luckily Mr. Nathan is kind of a close guy and kind of a bit of a friend of ours, so we asked him, hey. Can we borrow it so we can do a review and also to make a few parts for it? That'll be up later in the video. But right now I'm just gonna talk about the C S because I am a big, big fan of C S. I absolutely love it. In my opinion, C S is the best of the third party off brand retaliator based platforms because no other blaster has done takedown functionality as good as the C S. Straight up. <laughs> Straight up, you can't argue that. No one has done it better than the CDS. I'm like, sure, people say it. it ooh, it's got a little crinkle to it, but how often are you gonna be doing that on Warriors? You're gonna be holding it and running around and nerfing with it, so it's not really that big of an issue. And like, the only real issue that is why it crinkles is because of the tolerances for how tight uh, the takedown functionality is. They can't really make it as tight as they want it to because Jet's still sort of like relatively small company like they're making injection molds but they're still not as precise as some other companies that do take down functionality they're like real steel take down functionality so the CDS is great because with the removal of two pins you can get to pretty much all the internals that you need to fill with it already comes with an upgraded catch spring and a really nice catch so you really don't need to do very much even though in the alpha kit and probably omega it will come with a replacement catch this catch is really all you need the catch that came with the C that I had was probably a top tier retaliator catch in my opinion. It was nice, solid plastic that was not going to break. The catch spring on it is actually very, very stout and should hold for up to whatever KG spring you want to put into it. So there's no reason to try and upgrade that. And the only real reason you would need to open it up is if you want to do upgrades further for it such as like changing the spring guide for other springs instead of the thin theta spring which back when i made my version my theta fit for like 25 newton and everything the only reason i did that was because that was the only springs at the time now that there are theta springs out there that fit in this you honestly don't need to do any modifications to the lower half of this blaster all you really need to do is take it apart and you can swap in parts that you want if you want to do a full worker internal overhaul, you can. I wouldn't really recommend it. There's no real need to because the breach on this thing is already really nice. Uh, so yeah, let's talk about the Alpha Kit. Uh, the Alpha Kit comes pre-installed in the C2S for a really good value of $89 ship. That is incredibly cheap when you compare it to the other blasters such as the Dark Throne Pro or the Prophecy. It is so much cheaper than the other ones. And like, there are a few like ergonomic things that don't really fit well, such as the pump grip. But I'll get to that later. And like, that's really not that much of a change. Like, it. with the price you save on getting a C to S versus the other ones, you can buy multiple <laughs> different pump grips and experiment with what you want to put on. But the Alpha Kit comes pre-installed with the Spain and Plunder tube already in place with a 10 kg spring. Mr. Nathan has put a spring spacer in this. Let me actually take that out. <laughs> Before I start doing FPS testing, I'm gonna take out his spring spacer just so that I can get numbers consistent with a sort of stock uh, alpha kit. So here comes the plunder rod. He's looped this thing a lot. <laughs> and it's got a nice rubber padding in there. Uh, so to talk about sort of the downsides of the C to S, particularly is from what i've seen a lot the bolt sled that comes with it the plastic one is really not that great so usually people always replace that and then also the plunder tube sometimes cracks on the front which is kind of just a flaw with lift plunder tubes you can like this thing is like severely thick it's like 3 16ths of an inch almost a quarter of an inch thick and it still cracks because that's just how lipless plunder tubes work uh, and then you get the same issues that you get with any retaliator uh, kit, which is just there's a lot of dead space and you don't actually get that much plunder volume. Ooh, I had this written down. Let me see. 
I'm assuming that this plunger tube is the same that came with the Omni kit Sita that I got, and I already did the calculations for that. That this plunger tube, if it's the same one, has around 57 cc's of air, and that's not. I can't remember if I made that calculation and removed the dead space in there. It might be before removing the dead space, which is honestly not that much. It's about as much as a Kronos, and whilst you can get a Kronos hitting really hard, the Retaliator platform is sort of limited on what springs you can put into it. To put that into some perspective, it's less than a long shot by about 20 cc's, and it's less than the amount of air volume that is in my homemade internal plunger tube, which is coming at 85. So my homemade internal has the same air volume of this expanded plunger tube plus the stock retaliator pointer too. So you can get a lot better performance out of it in one lot. And I have plans to try and make a simple upgrade kit for the Cita S that plans to work in tandem with the Alpha kit. That's one of the reasons why Mr. Nick, why we asked Mr. Nick if we could borrow his because I plan on designing some things where like with like four or five parts and changes, no real extensive mods, all you really will need to cut is like two things off the original internals and you can still swap from the upgraded internals back to stock internals not the stock internals but other retaliator internals work just fine but it should be with a really cheap and simple couple upgrades take this thing from hitting with its 10 kg spring hitting around 150 and whatnot is the average to probably hitting close to 200 so that'll be my goal uh be tuned stay tuned for that i'll be working on that whilst mr nathan lets us borrow this but but yeah, that's my goal at least. I want to make it something like that because one of this, one of my weird opinions is that if you're gonna get a C to S and pay eighty nine dollars for this, but then buy an entire new set of internals, kind of doesn't really seem worth it in my mind because a lot of these parts in here are good and can be used. They just need some slight upgrades and like some slight reinforcements, such as the bolt sled needs some reinforcement. Changing the plunger tube to a lipless system will increase your air volume so much and decrease your dead space. But the spring, the plunger rod, the catch, all that can really be maintained and whatnot. So really the only thing that my plan kit would swap is the plunger tube with the lipless one, which I think is fine. And also the barrel. The barrel, that is another thing I will say about the alpha kit. Aside from the plunger tube potentially breaking at higher spring loads and the bolt slide being garbage, but I mean, a lot of bolt slides are. <laughs> the barrel on this thing is incredibly short. It's only around 15 centimeters, which <laughs> when Tucker and I were filling around with this off camera when we first got it, we were kind of shocked at how short it was. We were literally, we had his Omega barrel and we were like, oh, this is a good, like almost foot um whatnot. And then we also had his brass barrel. And so we'll be testing with those to get other FPS numbers. Can't even tell if the Chrono's in camera, the, the Chrono that I'm gesturing. Oh, it's barely there. But yeah, so we'll be testing with the stock internal using Mr. Nathan's spring spacer. And then we'll be fiddling around with other barrel placements. We'll be doing with the Omega barrel, the 271, and then also with 270 millimeter, and then also the foot of brass that we saw on our Etsy. Um, but yeah, like the barrel on this thing was shockingly short, which kind of makes sense because of how the plunger volume is not really the biggest. It is just really kind of shocking how also they like, they made the barrel length so that when they attach their zero, it fits perfectly to the end, which I can understand from like a cleansing cleanliness perspective. They wanted to keep this thing very compact and everything since it's their close engagement dart assault blaster <laughs> they wanted to make it that short but with i think an upgraded barrel like you're gonna see a lot better performance i feel and so we'll be testing that later these are also sort of some initial not really initial initial things because i do own a cita so my opinions of the cita are really nice you can swap out the buffer tube stock for a better one if that's what you choose that's what you so choose this one feel like it's locked on there pretty well like it doesn't have a ton of wiggle mine had a small amount of wiggle so i just put a little piece of foam in there and now it's rock solid and doesn't move at all which i like because i do like a short stock so having it fully collapses nice you can extend it and like i put some 
big pressure on that and it doesn't collapse on me, which is really nice and not something I can say about some other stocks <laughs> in the Nerf community. Um, what else can I say? I do, there is the opinion that it would be nice if this could swap out for other M4 grips, but I mean, this grip is nice. Like it's, <laughs> it's very big for my hand. Like honestly, it does not need to be this big. You can fit two extra fingers on there. <laughs> but it's incredibly comfy it fits well and like there's nothing necessarily bad about the grip sure it could be other things that are already like out there on the market it could be different but there's nothing to complain about on this grip whereas there are several other things where it's like oh my god this grip is terrible please get it out of here the magazine release is nice you don't really even use this one much though because you're gonna put your adapter in there so it is nice in that sense as well that it is out of the way on the x zeus there is a second lever which is not as good because i have hit that sometimes when i've tried to release the half start mag from, from tucker's x zeus so it is good that this is sort of out of the way you're only going to really hit it if you want to hit it and then you can really easily if you have long fingers reach the lever uh people the cs will work with talons so people who have complaints about katanas can also have that i don't really weigh in much on the katana versus talon debate i think talons are better they're cheaper uh they're cheaper and they're more durable but i do like the universe what's the word for it <laughs> the symmetricalness of a katana i like that aspect how it's symmetrical and you can it either way i haven't really played much of half dark wars so i don't have much experience with the katanas so i think they're fine and i just have the one from my Cita. that's all i really have so I think they're fine, but honestly, the Darts on Pro Mag are honestly what really interests me because uh, I honestly really <laughs> because from what I've seen the Darts on Pro Mag, they're Katana mags, but made better. And they're also cheaper. I wish they weren't. I wish they were sold in packs smaller than three because <laughs> I was looking recently and they sell packs of three for like a pretty good deal. But I don't really need three necessarily. <laughs> uh, so onto the pump grip. This is the foam technician pump grip uh, i believe that's what mr nathan told me and it is the picatinny version and he added to the angle grip it is much comfortable much more comfortable than the original one i never really realized how bad the original one was when i had it like i knew it was bad but like i was like eh, it's not terrible it'll work and whatnot it's like it'll totally work but this is really nice i might have to design myself uh, one of these or make a new pump grip for it because this is really comfy i don't necessarily like this handle that he had on there just because it feels weird having my index finger separate than this but that's just a personal complaint it is really nice um and then on to the internals it's got full alpha internals i already talked about the rear i'll show you guys the catch uh, i wish the catch had a rounded surface to it instead of just the flat one there can't really get the lightning right but yeah you guys can see it and like i said it's a pretty hefty catch spring so it should work nicely and it comes with the 10 kg spring and i haven't had any issues while priming and fire this thing the one thing that i don't like about it which is sort of Something that I didn't realize that I didn't like <laughs> initially until I made my retaliator internals is that the little slack in the prime is about like, it's like three quarters of an inch long, but it's just the initial part of the prime. And then you get to the actual hitting the plunger and compressing the spring. It, it just feels weird. I can't really describe it much besides it just feels gross and kind of clunky after priming mine so much that has no slack in the plunger tube in the prime having no slack in the prime just feels so much better than this this is just weird uh i will say another thing really great is how the threads lock into the bolt sled i don't have much experience with a prophecy and i have none with a dart zone pro but the one prophecy that i've worked on as i was working on it and trying to build a brass reach for it. I kept having to like take it apart and fiddle with it and sand everything so it was really nice and smooth and eating properly. But for one, the prophecy was so much harder to get into and work on the internal. It was annoying. But also that these threads that locked into the original bolt arms, they had connections that go into the bolt sled, which is good. Like that, that works well and it locks in there really nicely, but the screws were really small and I broke the screw. I didn't break the connection piece, but I broke the screw that went into it, which was annoying because then I had to like fish it out and like use needle nose pliers to rotate the screw out. And I had to give it back to the guy and be like, sorry, man, I don't know where I can source one of these screws, 
but it just doesn't really work very well. <laughs> but it just broke. And he's like, ah, it's fine. I'll find something. And so he found like some strap screw and like drilled it and tapped it himself. And I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. But like this system works so much better. It's easy. You don't actually need the bolts to go into the bolt sled because that just is not necessary. These just click right in, which is honestly how I have my retaliator set up with the upgraded side. Um, but yeah, this print is honestly really nice. Oh, it's a foam technician there. Well, I got that right. Uh, but yeah, this is a foam technician grip. It's printed really smooth. I honestly would recommend this if you want a Picatinny rail. This thing looks really nice. I might look into that myself. Another aspect of the Alpha Kit that I think is a cool design is how to take the whole barrel assembly out. It's a cool idea, but in my opinion, it's not really that great because you have to push down on this and it really doesn't <laughs> push very well. And then you can push the barrel from the front <sighs> out, maybe. <laughs> if it cooperates, there we go. What is rubbing on the rail there? Um, but yeah, then you can pull the whole barrel assembly out. How, do I, how come this isn't wanting to come? <laughs> what is that rubbing on? Oh, this. Um, Mr. Nathan, if you're watching this, I swear we didn't break that. That was how it is when we found it. Just saying, hopefully you didn't get mad. Uh, so this is the dark gate, which the breach sealed into very nicely. This connection is honestly really cool and airtight how that's sealed. And then the barrel, as we said, looks really short in comparison. And then the zero. We'll do a, we're gonna, we plan on filming an entire video of just the zero itself for those of you interested on that. But from like initial looks, it seems okay. But we're gonna be doing more in-depth tests of like how much it affects the FPS, uh, how much accuracy it is compared to like a scar and whatnot but that'll be in a future upload so this setup is really nice i love the threaded option so much better than the worker option the worker kit where the barrel just goes in the dark gate and you screw it and it clamps on it my opinion is bad <laughs> i don't like it this interchangeable system is so much nicer with the threads and everything if you guys have a jet blasters alpha or mega kit and you want to switch out your barrels of brass we sell an option where it's a full foot on our Etsy if you guys don't have access to brass or a 3D printer. But if you do, this has been put up on Thingiverse and I shared it around on like Facebook and Reddit and everything. So you can find that there. If not, you can message us and I'll send you the file. But it just prints out and it threads into either the Jet Alpha or a Mega Dark Gate and gives you a perfect air seal. And then you can swap out the barrel from an aluminum to a brass one, which is a little bit tighter fit. And then you can also get long ones. So we'll be testing that out. And I plan on testing with and without the zero because from Bradley's initial video of the alpha kit, it didn't include the zero and he's getting around like 170s, I think with a 10 kg spring. And then all the reviews with the zero in patch have like a 150 FPS. So I want to see if that's actually dropping you a bunch. Cause if so, that's bad in my opinion. Cause like, I feel like the idea of this concept is really nice. It's like an injection molded scar and like it looks really well but i think just the way they've done it really impacts your fps so um i believe that is everything that i wanted to talk about time to go into a lot of fps testing but yeah i'm gonna put this thing back together <laughs> for you guys and then we'll get out oh i should probably mention another thing that i'm going to be testing is the fps of the alpha internals with standard short length retaliator spring because from all that i've seen they should work with it and i haven't really seen anyone else test very much with that but i have a 7 kg worker retaliator spring and then i also have a 12 kg worker retaliator spring just to sort of see i wonder how that will compare to the long 10 kg and because of how the how the spring rests are set up and because of how thin this spring is you can potentially double them up so that might be something i might test with the long barrel and see, I don't really want to break Mr. Nathan's internals and I'm scared to do that. So I might, <laughs> might hold back on that, but yeah. Where's all this hair coming from? Uh, so for those of you interested, this is without the spring spacer, 
there's about an inch and a half of pre-compression on it. Very light and easy to put together. The one thing that I don't like about the CETA internals, which is by no means a blame on the CETA, it's just how stock retaliator internals work, is the bolt sled has to be lined up and then you know, line up the grooves. Sorry. And then you have to line up the bolt being in place. And it all takes a lot of work, whereas I'm used to mine where everything just sort of literally just slots right on in. But we need to stop harping so much about how cool my kit is in comparison to this. <laughs> Uh, another thing that's really great about the Alpha kit is it gets a really good air seal in stock form. Uh, a lot of people have commented about that, which is amazing because it gives you really nice... A good seal is never a bad thing. <laughs> How's it going? It's going alright. How's it going out here? Okay. So, I've got five worker Gen 3s filled up in my Comag, and then this is going to be... Purely stock CETA S FPS results, and then I'll start going into other things. Hmm. I don't know how to line this up properly. 159. This is with no spring spacer. I'll get to that later. 136. 153. 130. 152, and I'm out. So an average of 146 FPS, not bad. I mean, not great. Not, you know, like not great, but it's okay. It's a very light prime, only being 10 kg. 